Well, and I'm not sure if you hear me all right. Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Sweet. All right. Okay. Welcome to another Valence Developer Diaries. This one we're continuing on from the last episode, which we started on uh, an application to deal with documents <clears throat> on your IFS. Um, I think this might be a good point to maybe just, Sean, I'll make you the presenter. We could just go back to those original wireframes that we're basing the application off. Sure. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, you see me? Yep, I can see your screen. Okay, so I think last week uh, we just got this initial list here. Right. Um, so we'll get these two today, but uh, so then there's uploading the document. I think we got all this in place. And, and before you move on, should we just, since you're presenting now, should we show that RPG backend code for the upload? Yeah, 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 let's just go over. So let me just go, I'm just gonna go here quickly back into the application. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so here's here's the process of the upload. Um, so we call an RPG program, but before we call that RPG program, uh, we set a variable of the customer that was clicked. Yep. And then we call this RPG program to process it, and we ask for a couple other things here. So the code for that. Let me go start at the top here. Um, so this is our, you know, nav button template that we always used. Um, we're, this is a variable that's provided within this template is up G is upload. So I'm checking for that, then I'm processing the upload. And basically what we're doing here is we're really just building a path. We're building a path that we want to use on the IFS. Um, first thing I'm doing is I'm getting that app variable. I'm going to int it for the customer number, and then I'm constructing that path where I want it to save. And basically, we're just saving it at the root of customer docs documents forward slash the customer number. Checking if the path exists. If it doesn't, create it. Then we call Vivian file, and Vivian file will actually that's that's what takes the uploaded file and, and saves it to the IFS. Uh, we're passing this second parameter of this uh, star null, and that means we're gonna handle the response ourselves. Otherwise, VVN file will want to send back a response. Um, VVN file will populate other you know, uh, variables and or other properties in the VVN structure. First one we're checking for is error. If it's blank, we know it worked. Um, so we're just constructing the full path now. I'm just adding the file name because the file name that was uploaded will be passed back as well. Then we're getting, basically we're just, we're just getting uh, the, the, the data ready for our cust docs file. And we're just writing to that table and sending back a success of true and um, info, which is gonna pop up the snack bar with file, whatever your file name uploaded. Otherwise, if it didn't work, we were gonna pass back false. And then just to notate that for that path that we were going to, the customer documents on the IFS, yeah. in our previous session, we, we, we opened that up in the Apache instance. So right. Put it just for reference. Right. So I think that's, I think that's really it. Um, here, I guess when we go and we view the documents, we didn't do this part yet. I mean, we've got this showing, but we need to do when we click to either show the document in our URL widget, or if we can't show it in there, to initiate a document. Right. So I'm gonna head it back to you. All right. Okay, let me log in. So 
So what are we going to do first? I mean, let's just uh, let's just launch that app just so we can go over the current state, I guess, of it. Mm -hmm. So kind of did with the wireframe, but the actual app. So we have the initial list. We have our add of document and then view the documents for that customer. And like Sean showed, we already did this upload. We're adding, we've, we've added a description and then tags to be added to that document when we're adding it. And then I think what we have the viewing of the list of the documents under that customer, <clears throat> but we have nothing else. Not, we haven't wired up anything to download it or view it. So, but we also had those two widgets that were on the right, which was a. I think one was, one was a KPI and then the other one was a pie chart. Okay. So the KPI was just the total count of documents. Right. I wonder if we just get those yeah. set up. And I have the statement. So I'm going to type anything. Now let's do the KPI first. So we're going to create our data source for that KPI widget. Okay. And then for, I'm gonna limit my. All right, and then we're gonna create that KPI based off that new data source. Um, what do we have for a label on this thing? Just total? Uh, I don't know, total documents. Sure. Sure. Okay. All right, we'll just save that one and then we might as well just create the other one real quick. Yeah, so this one was a I pie chart it. that had the um it was based on the type, the file types. Okay. And I have that SQL just sitting here. Okay. Let's create that pie chart widget. And our data field is going to be the VV1 and the label field be file tight. And maybe add some, go ahead. Can you add, maybe pick some colors too? Yeah. Just, just yeah. to show that. Um, so just switch the colors to, I don't know. So if something to show. this, like by default, there are set colors it's just going to use and you can, change those colors and state, I want to use these colors instead. Um, one to many. So we should see it. Okay. Definitely want some padding because that thing is, sure. Do we do a donut? I don't know. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, I think that's it. I don't think we need anything else. Tool tip, maybe just for the percentage. Sure. Okay. All right, now that we have those two new widgets, we might as well just introduce those two into our app. And here is our application. So we're just going to go back into it. And right now I know that we're going to use it, probably that vertical container utility widget, right? Because we want to stack those two on the right. Right. So 
This is where those utility widgets are. And just like the last one, we had that URL widget, which we've already used in the previous session. This one, we're gonna use the vertical layout. I'm just gonna go. Uh, we wanna move this up to be here. And then we wanna add widgets inside this vertical container. And this, this gives us a way to, to stack them. And the other one. Okay. Maybe we give some height, more height to the pie. Yeah. Or or maybe maybe even a fixed. Well, I just give it a flux. Yeah. Probably, <clears throat> I mean, I, I kind of like that idea of giving this a fixed height. Um, I don't know what we think here. 100? Maybe, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, 50. Eh. Yeah. Okay. Now I know that my margins are going to be off, right? So I don't want to do it on that. But I just want so to remember, the goal is always to have consistent margins around every widget. That's what Johnny's doing here. Right. I think I want to deal with left too, because we have this container, which is taking yep. up space. No. Yep. I think that's right. This one I should just deal with left and I don't have to deal with anything else. Okay. All right. Those are our two widgets. Let's just make sure we see those as expected. Okay. So now after we upload, uh, we could probably maybe even put that that list to have more width, huh? Yeah, I think it looks strange that it's yeah. Yeah. This is so wide. When we upload, let's just verify that those two widgets get updated as well. You know, right. after a successful upload. So first, let's just add a little bit more width to our grid. And then, yeah, like you stated, when we're doing this adding of a document here. So remember, it calls an RPG program, and then the RPG program sends back a success. And at that point, we can do other actions as a result of that success. Right now, we're just reloading the customer list. Well, now we introduced a couple other widgets that we also want to reload data for. There you go. Okay. Um, since we're in here, the next thing would be is that we probably should start dealing with this section. So when I click on a, a document that we have, I want to either see it here in our URL viewer or it gets downloaded because the browser doesn't support that, that file type. Right. Yeah, so from the back end's perspective, all I would really care about is when they click on that document, I just need some sort of unique ID so I know which document they clicked. And our, our, our table, Cus Docs, has a unique ID field. So if you could just pass that down, then the back end can determine whether to show it or download it. Okay. So here we are. We have no we have no action whatsoever. Based on those wireframes, did we? Um, it was a row click, I'm assuming, and then we yep. had a move. Yeah, just a row click. Mm -hmm. So here, the first thing we want to do is we want to set the app bars because 
Oh, well, I need a document ID. Yeah. Doc ID. So we're going to go back to app variables, create a new variable, doc ID. Now, Okay, doc ID. Again, we want to map it to a column in that row that was clicked. Yep, and there it is, UID. And it's the UID. Now, we, after that, we're going to call that same RPG program. And which was again? Uh, DD underscore cus docs. So we're using the same. RPG program that's processing the upload. This is the template that we base it off of. Do we and need an action? action? Yep, get doc. And you know we always we you know we always follow camel case for our action and for our variables typically too. Um, uh, yeah, so if a document is returned, because I may return the document, download it. You know, and then here we don't really we no, don't no. need to ask anything from the user. We just this we're already passing everything we need. So I'm just gonna right. save that. I guess just for you know, here we have the additional resources. You can change the timeout, of course, mass text, so on. So I think this should be good. Okay. Um, me just saving that is one thing. I guess that call, I get should I we Transition let's, to you and we can show that code. Let's try it. Let's just see if it works first. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to bring up dev tools because all I did was just call your program. I didn't do anything. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't catch that. I, I oh. didn't, when I clicked it, I just made the call of the RPG program and didn't Nothing. do anything about it. So I didn't even think about that. Here we're just in the browser developer tools. We just want to see that call being made. Okay, no, it's it set. Oh, you set the variable. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. I forgot we already pre linked it. Awesome. Maybe go, go, go to the other customer because there's more documents. Perfect. And yeah. So, so this one has some PDFs and then it, it also has a, you know, a, a JPEG and an Excel file. So an Excel file, we can't show in line like that, but right. so that should initiate a download. So that should. So here we'll just click, up. we should view it. Now I'm clicking one that we can't view and sweet. Yeah, it downloaded it, awesome. Yeah, so maybe now we look at the code for that. I don't know, Johnny, would it be helpful to just show DevTools just to show what's being I sent think, down? I think it might be. I don't know. I find it interesting. Okay. So the request was made. Here's our program. Yeah. Here's our action of get doc. So the template program processes all that other stuff you see, like rows one. Um, it'll go in and extract and a detail. It'll extract all that information and make it available to you in various uh, procedures that are relevant to that template. Uh, and then let's see what it passed back. So in this case, this was a PDF, which it's it, which we can display in the browser. So we the backend set the app variable of doc path. Now that's an encoded uh, string you see there. So you you know it, it's it's not very uh, friendly to look at. Um, but behind the scenes, because that doc path was set, right? Remember so, the maybe it'd be good to show an app builder how doc path is is bound to that URL. Right. I guess right away, let's just so we can see it. Let's just decode that. So, 
customer docs 1297 customer list.pdf. And then, like you said, let's go to App Builder and see how we're bound to that. All right, so that's the second section, and it's our URL viewer. And if we go to the link to app bars, the URL property for this widget was linked to DOF path. So like as Sean stated, the backend RPG program set the path, set the variable of doc path. And because that was set, it changed, the URL viewer will automatically change its URL to that, to that value. Right. All right, now I guess we can look at the back end yes. code that get doc. It's a good time to do that. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, so remember everything, we put our, our code in process. So, you know, we already know what this is doing. If it's not an upload, then we're pulling in action. So remember in App Builder, when he did call RPG program, he specified an action of get doc. So if it's get doc, we're gonna execute get doc. So all we're doing here, remember he set that app variable of doc ID. We're just gonna get it and we're gonna int it. And now we're going to that cust docs table and just getting that whole record of that document. Um, if I don't find it for some reason, we're gonna send back an error. Otherwise, you know, there's probably a more efficient way to do this, but I've just got a, you know, a bunch of if statements here. But um, if the file type is what we're calling a web supported format, then I'm setting the app var to the value of that, that field file path that has the whole path of the file and sending back success true. Otherwise, we can't show it in line. We're gonna initiate a download. <clears throat> this, is all, this is all we need to do. VV out that file, the name of the file, and then we pass the path, and then that downloads the file on the browser. So I will stop sharing here and go back to you. Okay. You can see my screen. Yep. Sweet. Um, I guess I'd be curious to make, to make sure that that first screen that we, when we process and upload that all those totals update now. That is true. Let's just do that. Um, hold on real quick. I think we have, I need to mute it. Sorry, I think somebody was unmuted and heard background noise. Okay, um, all right, let me just add an upload. Uh, let's see what I have here, what can I? Sure. Next. Sweet, yep, that worked. Excellent. Um, we should probably also allow them to upload from this screen as well. Right. Yeah, that would be nice because once I'm in here, I might want to add documents. So so back to behaviors. And now we're talking about this section. Personally, I think what? We would just make it a button on the section itself. Yeah. And you know, this is this is a good point here. Um, we'll see customers in, the, in this case this this button that we're creating we only want it to show up when they're in this doc section um we'll we'll see customers at times create buttons at the application level which means right. it always shows and then what the customer will do is then they'll hide and show the button on their own which um really just is more work than necessary so you know we always recommend put your buttons only on the section that you want them See the exact <clears throat> same icon we used. 
to the right, that's fine. Perfect. All right, so on that. Yeah, so we're just, um, we're gonna call that same, that same process, that, that uh, DD cuss up, cuss docs. No action. Actually, we, we need information. Yeah. And this information, if you could remind me of the uh, uh, hold on, grammar. Hold on. I'll tell you, give me one second here. Sorry. Okay, so you want doc label of document and that's the file. Okay, it's required. Yep, then you want description is label and the parameter will be DESC and that's required and it's 128 length. Okay. Then the last one are tags and we just had wrapped around parentheses, comma, separate each tag. Parameter name is tags. Text, it's not required, and it's 256 length. Okay, so here we're just building up that prompt window because we want more information from the user before they proceed, before we call that RPG program. Looks good. Okay. So in this case, when we send back success, um, we wanna make sure that we update that customer docs list. Yep. Okay. I guess now that we're saying that, I might, we might have to look at our back and see if we're going to, we, we probably want to change our back to refresh the data if we're not already doing it on the main list and KPI and the KPI and PI. Yeah. Maybe show that just so that makes. Show the, the behavior or just the, through the app? I don't know. Maybe through the app. Okay. All right, I'm going to leave what we have now. So we're uploading the document on success from the back end RPG program. We're going to refresh that doc list. Okay, I'm just gonna go into this one. So we have those, I'm gonna add the same. We have our new ad. I'm gonna do the same one. Uh, test two, and I'll add some notes and test. Sweet. Nice. So we just reuse that RPG, you know, action to do the same thing in just a different section of the app. But now that I've added a third one, what will Acme Corporation have here? Oh, we already had it uploaded uh, to auto refresh on back. Sweet. Awesome. So we're good. Okay. Right. So I think the next thing we'd want to be able to do is dealing with the ability to delete these documents. Yeah, and then maybe, yeah, we'll get that going and then we'll implement uh, security afterwards with that. Okay, so first we need to add a way for them to, to request to do the delete. So I'm gonna go into the documents app. I'm just gonna go directly to behaviors because that's what we're gonna be in for a bit. Okay, so here's our list. We already have an action for row click. I think what, based, even based on the, the wireframes, we wanna add a, like an icon to that row, right? Yeah. So we'll do the icon column. And then we'll search for uh, trash. Okay, um, sure. Uh, we do. We don't. In this instance, we don't need a condition because if it's there, it exists. So, okay. So now, what are we going to do when we click that? Um, so we're going to call that same RPG program DD underscore cus docs, 
except we're gonna have a different action now of delete doc. And then I don't know if you want to put a confirmation. I that's think good. that's a good idea. Okay. So usually we do a confirmation is just, are you sure you wanna do what you're about to do? Like if I'm gonna delete something, sometimes you wanna ask the user, are you sure you click, you click delete? Are you sure you wanna continue? Okay. Okay, and then before uh, I know that on success, we want to do a refresh of that list, right? That's right. So here's my list. I'll load the data on success. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else in the app that I would need to do. That should be it because the back was already reloading everything if it's successful. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. I'm going to save this and then should we run through the app first and then go through the back end RPG? Yeah. Okay. Now we're hoping to see that new delete icon on each row. There it is, sweet. So I'm gonna delete this one. Here's our confirmation. I'm gonna say yes. Uh -oh. I don't think that worked. <laughs> All right, sweet. Yeah. Good dev tools here. Yeah. I'm gonna see if there's anything wrong in the back end. I'm going to start over real quick just to see what we're passing, what we're getting back. Okay, I think what we need is I need the document ID. Oh, I never set that app var. I need to know what's being deleted. Right, right. So just as we did on the row click, we set the app var, we need to do the same thing for the icon column. Oops. And then doc ID, save. And I'm just gonna move this up because I know I want to do this first. Can I? I can't. I think you're moving the wrong oh. one. Set app variables you want to move. Oh, what was I? You were. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Okay, so set up variables. We'll have the doc ID. Then the back end would be able to pull that in and then remove it. Right, let's try that one more time. Do the same list. Move the last one. Yes. Excellent. I say no, the prompt is gone. Sweet. All right, I think this is probably a good time to swap and look at that back end code that's doing that. Okay, uh, this is really simple. So back to process, that's where everything starts. Uh, we're getting our action. In this case, our action is delete doc. So we're executing procedure delete doc. And all that is doing is it's getting the app variable that Johnny just set, that doc ID. Um, then we're, we're just going and getting the path of the file from that from that tape, from that custodox table. Um, then we're removing it from the IFS, and then we're deleting it from the custodox table. Um, ultimately, we're gonna send back success true. This, what we're doing here, and we should probably show this on the front end. So basically, if I clicked 
a document, let's say I clicked a PDF and it's showing on the right, if I delete that PDF, then I want this to be, um, I wanna set that doc back, path back to that no document image. Right. So basically we're saying if, if, if the document that I'm creating Remove is the it. same one that's currently shown, then set it back to uh, that no document markup. Okay. So maybe we can just show that. Yeah. Just why that's working. Oh, make you back to the presenter. Okay, as you were staying. So I'm gonna go to this one actually, because they're not different docs. Okay, so if I'm, I have this document up and I'm viewing it and then the user goes to say, remove it, we're expecting it to be seeing that no docs selected template here. So I'm gonna do that. Perfect. Nice. Now, if I did, I'm looking at this, this document, however, I'm removing this one, it shouldn't, this view should sh stay the same, I think, right? That's right. Because I am looking at a different doc. Sweet. Nice. Excellent. All right. All right. Now, I guess let's, let's put the, um, we're just, we're going to put a, a security in the ability to delete. Right, we don't want everybody to be able to do that. And, and we're gonna do it differently than we did it last time. Last time, remember, we had that um, RPG startup program that based on the user profile disabled the feature. Um, we're not gonna use a startup program this time. We're gonna do it a different way. All right, so we go back into App Builder, into this app, and then we're gonna go to the security section. And then the idea is I need to add a, a feature name for this re delete. Yeah. Um, remove, doc. Delete. Yeah, remove doc. There you go. Okay, now that I have a feature. Yeah, so, so what, yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a copy of this application and one application is going to, you know, just run as it is right now, like the one we're using right now. But our, our copied application, we're going to add a URL parameter to it of DF. And that's short for disable feature. And that's what Johnny I think has his mouse over now. Right. Um, and then that's just a, a comma separated list of features to disable. So that way you'll base your authority based on, you know, the portal, group authority you know so if, if if you know user joe isn't allowed to delete apps um he'd get the second version of this app <clears throat> the one that we're copying right and again like in previous sessions we had an actual startup program that and it's explained here and we did in the previous session i can't remember which one it was but maybe i think session two is where we have the rpg program disables the feature here we're just we don't want to have to write any rpg program we just want to copy the app set a parameter on that app, and then that app would, like Sean said, be part of group authority in the portal, so users could have it or not. All right, so now we have that. I really, all I need to do is just uh, save this. Save this. <clears throat> and now we're gonna go, into, what, administration, and I wanna yeah. create a new one here. Go to apps. Here's our customer documents. We want to keep this one the same, so we're just going to copy it. Uh, customer docs. Uh, no, no DEL. Okay. And then we want to go to settings. An optional parameters, and you said it was DF, right, for disable feature? Yeah. And then I called it um, remove. remove doc. Doc. Okay. Let me 
Okay, so I should be done with portal admin. I'm going to turn this guy off for right now. Okay, here's our current, here's our new one. So I'm going to go into the new one. We hope to see that that delete action is not there or disabled. Okay. Sweet. Excellent. So then I can just go back to the launch pad. Here's our curtain, the original one. And now we should still see that remove of document icon. Yep. Perfect. So hopefully that made sense. So that way you would based on, you know, you would use the valence security, you know, group models or right. user security to determine which users should get which app. I think that's yeah all we have then. Sweet. Well, I guess we'll we'll be finishing up a little earlier than usual. Yeah, yeah. Unless anybody has any questions. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, you can unmute your mic, ask, or do it in the chat. Otherwise, um, yeah, I think this app this app is done for uploading documents and retrieving them and removing them from the IFS. Uh, hey, Sean, this is uh, Pawan from Right Tree. Uh, just a quick question. This is my first DD session. Do you guys have the recording for the previous DD sessions? Yes. Which, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. The YouTube channel? Yeah, let, yeah. Me go to, let me go to CNX YouTube. Pause this all to start. So, yeah, they're all, we, we've been uploading after each session. Within like the next couple hours or so, we'll upload that same day. The recording of it so you'll be able to find you know there's the first one the second one the third one the other thing too is i think that i think we've updated we've added a, the calendar so then you can see the next session's coming and also if i go previous i think if i click on the session the link's directly there too for that recording perfect Uh, theory asked if there's a widget where the upload can be done with drag and drop and there is not currently. Yeah, no, we don't have one for drag and drop. Uh, on the delete, uh, do we have like select all and delete by any chance? Like in the second screen and delete docs, you were deleting one doc at a time. Can we loop through and delete it? Yeah. We yeah, could. you want to. You want to? We got. We got. How much time? Yeah, we've got some time. Okay. So the question was, we've added the ability to remove a document, uh, a single document for that customer, but could we remove all documents or w one to many? I'm. I'm assuming. So, um, based on that, we're going to. Um, we're going to go to behaviors. Well, no, I don't want to go behaviors yeah. first. I want to go to that section. So this is something that is based off the grid itself, right? I'm going back in memory. And there's and there's really multiple ways we can do this. Right. So do we want the user to be able to, you know, just have a button that says remove all, or do we want them to be able to individually select multiple that they want to remove? And that's that's more flexible. So let's say we go that way. I yeah, allow um, multiple selections, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, Pavan, what do you think? Is that what you were looking for? Uh, yeah, it's like multiple selection. That would be ideal, like the way we do in a normal grid. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so on a grid, so on every widget, when you click the gear, it's the settings for that widget. So settings are gonna look different based on each widget. It's a grid, so we know that we can inject the uh, checkbox on the, for row selection. So then we're gonna want a button to appear that will allow them to process those those deletes and and most importantly too we don't want that button to be um enabled unless they actually have something selected right, right. now i would think we'd want that button directly on the grid right yeah so add button
can't remember which one I've been using at all to be consistent. Um, the first one. The first one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And then we want to hide that when hide when no row is selected. And that's only valid because this grid has the multi selection set up in the settings of that widget, right? Is that the idea? Uh, right. Okay. All right, now that we've done that. So in this case, yep, we're gonna do the same thing. I mean, I'm not gonna set any app bars though. I don't need no. to. It's just gonna be called that RPG program. We need new delete, delete docs. Delete docs. Nothing's gonna come back. Right, we're gonna prompt. Move all selected. And then, of course, on the response of success, we want to do the reloading of this list. Load data. Okay. Um, so really, I don't, think, I don't think I want to fumble around writing right. the article. You know, but at least we'll show what what can be done. So, um, if if can you go, can you click that again, Johnny? That call RPG program. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, because we only have twelve minutes left. So in this case, yeah. And if you can click on the help. So in this case, I think if we go to example, sample one, maybe. Oh, see multiple grid rows, perfect. Yeah, so this is, so, so what, what, what we would do on the back end here is, you know, we're gonna check for that same uh, action of delete docs. I would create a new procedure called delete docs as opposed to delete doc. Um, and that G selection count, that's going to have the number of rows that were selected. And I'm just going to do, I would do the same thing this is doing. I do a for loop and I'd create a variable to hold my doc ID. And I would do get selection num, passing the index and the name of that field, which I think is, uh, I think it's UID was the name of the field on the table. Um, and then for each one, I would delete it and then set back a response of, of true. And, so you know, just like we're doing today for the single delete, we would I'd copy this thing exactly pretty right. much. Yeah, because it just changed okay. by the names around. Okay. All right. Poppin, did that, did that answer your, your, your question? Yes, sir, it did. All right. Thank you. Okay, and then both both Eric and Theory are asking if the example would be available for download. Um, example, oh, you mean what we've done? Right. Uh, yeah, we haven't really. Let us get back to you on that. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I guess we don't know the best way to really share it all right now. Or if... And also, we it all depends on the current version that you're at. Like we're, we're, we're always going to be on the latest that's released publicly. Um, so if somebody's not, and we did give some kind of export, it could be a problem if they're, if your instance is pretty far behind, but yeah, I guess we'll have to talk internally and see if there's a way for us to somehow either. Yeah. Share that information easily. You know, Jack, Jack just asked a good question. Mm -hmm. Um, He's asking is, you know, do we consider that best practice to have one RPG program per NAB application? And at least, you know, this is obviously just opinion. Um, you know, my answer would be it all depends. Um, you know, in this case, this is small enough. Um, I, I personally like having it all in one spot, but you know, things, obviously a, a, an application that does a lot more, um, you know, I, I wouldn't, I might not want it to become this huge monolithic program in that case, but so yeah, sorry, no good answer. <laughs> but in this case, you know, we preferred it to be one application. And plus we wanted to show that those, 
those applications that the, the template program can be reused for uploads and various actions. Right. Uh, what is the valence version that we are currently on, Johnny? I, I will bring it up. It's, I believe it's just the exact latest. So we're at 0415, which I think. Um, oh, so there is, there is, there's, there's just a fix available, I think. But that's that's pretty much the latest. Okay. I think there was a a, a minor fix released after that. Oh yeah, there. So, okay. Documentation for app variables. App variables are, are you know, they're, they're a beta feature right now. Um, right. So the, the documentation will be with Valence 6. Yeah, once 6 is released, we'll be flagging these features, not beta anymore, and we'll have all the docs updated for these beta features. But until then, if you wanted to, you know, to use app variables, remember you go to portal admin settings. That's a good point. Let me just go there real quick. And you're gonna, yep, enable data features. And we did this in one of our previous sessions. So in settings, data. So beta features enabled, and then you'd save that to turn those on. And some things are in there, you know, there's, there's some other things that are wrapped in that beta feature for right now. But as far as app variables, all it is is, you know, you, you create your app variables, you could create any number that you need. Um, and then within behaviors or within your RPG program, so all of your RPG template programs will have a get app var and a set app var. Um, and then within behaviors, any sort of clicks, you'll always have the ability to do a set app var. And then within filtering, you'll have access to those app vars or within app, you know, or any of your other actions, you'll have access to the app variables. All right. Is there any other questions? Uh, no. Okay. That was it. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, <clears throat> um, Thanks for everyone joining us. And again, um, this will be on our YouTube channel today at some point. Usually it's like within a couple hours. Um, and we'll be updating our calendar with um, next Friday's session information on what we're gonna go over. Again, with that stated, um, we really would like if anyone has any kind of recommendations for content during the Valence Developer Diaries, please send an email to support at cnxcorp.com. Um, and let us know and we'll definitely uh, add that type of content. So that's all I got. Sean? Uh, yeah, that's all I got. All right. Well, thanks everyone. And everybody have a good rest of your day and good weekend. Have a good weekend. All right. Bye now.